Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, David, for having me here today, Analyze Your Trade. It has been a phenomenal day so far. I was able to tune in a little bit uh, into the previous uh, presentations, the previous analysis, and oh my gosh, you guys are in for a real treat. All right, so especially for Stephen, oh my gosh, like totally, you should respect candlesticks like this is the number one thing it all boils down to the most simplest simplest strategies all right so uh just right my alley <laughs> all right all right so for those of you that do not know me my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade swing trade and invest into the market in any kind of market environment and on uh definitely any time frame right daily day trading, swing trading, investing, et cetera. I've been doing this for over 20 years. And uh, prior to this, I come with 10 plus years in uh, investment banking experience. I run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs since 2010. And that's when Trade LA was about. So we have been in business for 13 years. I also run a trading room with the newest addition uh, into our program of futures in 2017. And we do offer uh, trading education for swing trading, day trading, and also for investing. And I love to uh, specialize in high velocity moves. Well, you would not be able to specialize and to actually focus on high velocity moves, not unless you pay attention to, guess what, guys? This is going to be a repetition, candlesticks. Uh, at the right time and the right location. So I have added two of the things into my analysis that is going to give me, you know, just a little bit of precision for intraday trading. So not for swing trading and uh, investing, but for day trading. So I focused on price support resistance, but I focused on eight layers of price support resistance, not only supply and demand, that is only 10% of the equation. I also focused on specific trigger times, especially when I'm day trading. Uh, there are a few specific trigger times for the New York trading session open. There are some, uh, if you guys are trading the overnight markets, if you're trading the London session, there are some that correspond with the timings in the New York trading session as well. Uh, and that is this is so amazing to know exactly when to time your trade and when to look for a setup. Because how many times have you guys have gotten into a trade uh, it was a perfect trade. You got in. The technicals were all lined up. You got the trigger. You got in. And then shortly after, you have stopped out. Okay? I know that's a bummer. But guess what? It may not have been at the right time and the right location. Okay? So also spe uh, uh, specialized in specific price zones and chart synchronicity and uh, chart diver uh, divergency. All right. So let's get started, everybody, with some real good chart analysis. And I'm really ready. Um, okay, I'm just really ready for your uh, for your stocks. Just uh, just type them in here, guys. What is the first stock that you want to see analyzed today? First stock. All right, so we have Halliburton at the first pick. Okay, all right, so here is Halliburton. So Halliburton, I like to go a little bit far off. Okay, thanks so much. Keep them coming, guys. All right, so Halliburton was a little bit of a laggard, as you guys see on the monthly chart. And so far, we have opened within the prior high and the prior low. You can see them right here. I have a big plus sign prior high and the prior low of uh, the mark of March. Okay, keep them coming, guys. Thank you. All right, so at this point, there is some selling pressure that is coming in from the flat almighty 200 simple moving average. This is going to be the line in the sand. And remember, this is something that a lot of institutions pay attention to. And not only that, uh, but not only institutions, um, from the investing standpoint, but also algorithms, okay? So anything that trades, and especially on a major time frame below the 200 simple moving average, is mostly seen as bearish. But wait, there's a catch. As you guys can see, in 2020, 
we have a bottom. And by the way, take a look at this volume right here, volume coming in. Whenever you have a spike in volume along with the wider range bar, which is definitely, you know, outside of its normal price uh, average, you're always going to see that there is a price rotation pending. So that means that that price action may have reached a bottom. And you could observe the same thing when, for example, the price screams up ballistically, for example, like in a climactic move or in an, uh, when the price is into a, a way overbought area. And if the price came like with velocity, like it, uh, you know, like it, meant real business, like kind of not, not like here, but you need to see wide bar, wide bar, wide bar, wide bar. And if that comes along with the spike in the volume, it just shows us that there's a reversal that is pending. And this is exactly what I'm in here. So in 2020, we had the low. We had early signs uh, within the same year of a higher low and a higher low and of course, another higher low, right? So that is the definition of the change in the trend. We also have, and I want to highlight this, uh, we also have a massive level, which is this horizontal line, which basically comes from this prior support low that transitions into tons of resistance uh, into the current price action, okay? So it's getting its resistance from the prior low. This is minor resistance. So basically when you're looking at the chart, it's sideways, but when you're looking at the uh, tops over here, you can see that the tops are declining. Also, what is to be noted is that we have a really wide area of support. And basically, when we came in in 2020, we have revisited a prior low from 2001, right? And the market did just, uh, you know, a lot of the stocks in, um, uh, a lot of stocks did that. They have revisited prior lows that were set uh, into 2000, into 2003, most of them 2008 or 2009 that were stronger. All right, so where does that leave Halliburton for now? Well, first of all, if I you know zoom in on the technical image, I see that once the price action in January 2021, which is in this location, once it caught above the 20 simple moving average, which is a trendsetter, by the way, uh, once it caught above it, it has defended price. So you can see here that the price came in to the 20, rotated, it went back up. So now we're trading into a cluster of resistance and support right here. And you can see that the price is trading right in the middle. So if I was to look at this trade for, let's say, to identify an entry potential uh, for either a swing trade or an active investing trade, I will look to see if the price action is able to tackle these highs above $40. Because if the price would be able to tackle the $40, 39 to $40, that would show us that the trend is still intact. It'll show us that it will manage to trade above uh, March's highs, which is right here into the 38, it's close to 39, right? And I think it's 30, no, oh, let's see for the highs here, 39.05. All right, so it will tackle this high and it will send it back into this resistance. Now, Based on the current analysis, because we have a low and a higher low, it would be a given that the price action would break that 39 level and it will start going back into the uh, $44 and even break the $44. Now, at this moment, one of the biggest things that I don't like is that the price action is trading below the 200 simple moving average on a higher time frame. And you guys know that higher time frame dictate what lower time frames, uh, you know, the lower time frame, lower time frame behavior. So for example, consider this, the monthly charts and the weekly charts are like generals in an army, right? And they give orders, right? They give orders to captains, they give orders to soldiers, et cetera. So your captains and your soldiers are the one minute, five minute, all the way through the one hour. 
And the higher the time frame, the higher the rank. So definitely these are the guys right here that dictate the move. So right now, Halliburton is, again, is under a lot of pressure. It's trading within inside the range. And if I'm going, for example, to a weekly chart, you can see that we're seeing the range a lot, you know, a lot clearer. And we also have another support zone from uh, a 200 simple moving average from which we have bounced. But the price action is sideways. Uh, it has a 50-50 shot for higher. It has a 50-50 shot for lower. I don't like the fact that the MAs are still above the price. So it really needs a lot of love in order to start moving higher from some uh, from some funds to start picking it up. Uh, so as for now, Halliburton, you, you know, it's, on a side uh, on the side burner i wouldn't engage in any kind of trades into it right now i would wait until it gets above the 20 sma at least and it closes above the 20 sma or let it move up and let it pull back and let it reestablish another higher low compared to the previous one right here because it's constructive so as you can see it's very constructive constructive because from 2020 it has done nothing else then move higher and it has created the higher highs it has created the higher lows so it's trading into that direction and actually the weekly chart suggests that yes it is really trying to go higher because it gapped and it wasn't synced with the oil uh, move with the crude oil move the crude oil uh gapped up on sunday uh, because of OPEC, right? They're cutting uh, production. So uh, that's the reason why you're seeing the gap up in most of the energies like CVX, XOM, and so on and so forth. So I hope that answered your question. For me, I would just, you know, just watch it for now and let it uh, reassess itself a little bit later. Okay, Michael, GFI is the next one. GFI. All right, here it is. All right, GFI, let's take it top down and let's go to the monthly. So what we're seeing here is that we have uh, we have massive, massive, massive consolidation, right? This is uh, this is uh, this is gold, right? Gold, a gold, um, uh, a gold stock. So it's doing what GLD is doing is doing what uh, gold futures is doing. It's consolidating into the highs. I see a very strong potential for a continuation higher. Uh, current monthly escape outside. So I think that it, it, the technical image shows that it should push at least into the $16.20 to $17. And if it breaks the $17, it does have a lot of room for higher. So in fact, I'm going to show you the near target that we're having. It may run into the $20. You can see it right here. It may run to $21, $20, and $23. Uh, and this is like, uh, you know, once it breaks above the highest point, which is the $17.20. So, yes, it's in sync GFI with pretty much everything that is gold out there. So it has uh, a higher, uh, higher um, projection for it. Um, okay, so right now you can see that the price action from the weekly, you know, and by the way, just so you guys know, if you are very new to trading or just have been trading for just a short while, like two years or five years, uh, gold typically when, you know, it has periods when it accelerates, it pushes higher depending on the environment. And now gold is back into being the safe haven, right? Uh, so the dollar moving down, gold moving up, teeter-totter effect, just like the euro dollar, you know, dollar down and euro up. Um, so basically what we're seeing here is more interest going into gold. Everybody, you know, is buying gold institution. And I'm talking about institutions. All right. So uh, basically this is uh, this is why this move has happened. But in general, after the move is going to be kind of like done, I mean, it's not going to run forever, it will start to stabilize. And when it stabilizes, it stabilizes for years because I wanted to show you something back here on the weekly chart. So since we have this surge in price in 2020, we basically have base for close to three years, okay? Close to three years right here, range. And if you look at the bottoming effect here, since we formed this bottom in September uh, 2013, 
the breakout came in May 2020. So you're going to have a lot of patience if you're looking for long-term uh, gold holds and uh, long-term positions in gold. But other than that, it's a great commodity. I have a swing in gold and uh, gold futures, and it's working great. I haven't even trailed it yet because it has been so strong. And from the daily, be very careful because as you guys can see, it's really fast approaching a fib resistance close to $15. Yesterday, we had inside price action, and today, if we're going to explode above uh, not only yesterday's high, but I'm putting my the, the upper part of this plus sign, uh, but also uh, from April, uh, April 4th, you could see that it has a little bit of room uh, into these uh, highs of $15. So yes, I love this consolidation, and this is what you want to see. Uh, on a pressure to the upside. This is very common. And by the way, this is one of the patterns that was very common back in uh, 2000 before the dot-com bubble. Everybody was buying at the beginning of the day uh, and calling their brokers, hey, buy Apple, buy, I don't know, whatever. And then they were selling it and to the end of the day. That was just an example, okay? All right, uh, now, uh, Michael, I hope that was okay. Uh, we're moving to Angel, which is asking for CLFD. Let's just put on CLFD. All right, and we're gonna go top down again. CLFD is approaching a retracement uh, into the 50 SMA. Uh, it has a bid on a super power trend until December 22nd, uh, December 2020, uh, 22nd, and then it started to fall apart. And these are more like, um, the more I look at these, these are literally like almost climactic drop candles. Uh, volume is also increasing. So we mean, I don't know, this is going to be the decision uh, area right here into the $43. Now let's take a quick look uh, and see where we're at. Oh, yes, here we go. This is going to be a possible turnaround point. So watch it into next week because this week uh, we're, we're the market is going to close at four o'clock and uh, the market is going to reopen on Monday. Uh, but uh, as long as this 200 SMA holds the $43 uh, or 4350, I like the fact that we have another confirmation pivot at around that area. Uh, there is this very strong chance that if we break above, and these are these highs over here, uh, into the 47, early 47, yeah, $47. So over $47. This could be a short squeeze if you're looking just at, you know, for a two to three day swing or a one, one week swing. Uh, it has the potential to run to 55. So the parameters on this would be 47, the stop under 43, and you will look for a target into the into the 55. That would provide you with a about two R trade for now. Uh, longer term than that, I would not look at uh, look at it yet. It's not ready yet, and it doesn't have any defined entries for long term. Uh, the next one is Coin. All right. Let's take a quick look at coin and see where it's at. You can see that I've done some analysis in coin here. All right, so let's go to the highest time frame, And we already see that we have a lid here uh, just above the $80. So that is a big resistance zone. Uh, so that's the area that we should be aware of. And uh, of course, we're seeing that, you know, we kind of have like these sloppy bottoms as well uh, onto the weekly chart. So the, the stock is definitely not ready to go anywhere yet. What I do like is that the price action has improved since January because it's holding uh, it's holding like in the core of the range and trying to push a little bit higher. I would start looking at it over $85. So I would like to see it just above, eight, I would say even $86, 86 or 87. It needs to prove a lot in order to uh, continue higher. From the daily standpoint, it's uh, trading in the middle of the range. Uh, this is a sit on your hands type of stock for now until it proves uh, the direction. All right, uh, now, 
a W. This is Wayfair. So Wayfair is back to the bottom. You guys can see here what goes up, comes back down. Uh, it's back into a $30 stock, believe it or not. And not long ago in 2021, it was trading over $350. And now it's like $30. So is this going to be a good buy or a good haul? Well, let's take a quick look. So first of all, we have a lot of support into the $30, just below the $30, right? There is a potential for a short squeeze that may be developing over last month's high, which is around $42. If it breaks around $42, it would have room a little bit to go higher into the 54 to 55. That would be for about one R, not a great risk reward ratio. And the, the battlefield is going to be, and the battle is going to be into this 55 to $60. Uh, we had an attempt to go higher. You see this 10 EMA house holding the price captive, right? Into the dominant downtrend here. And basically this is back into a phase one, right? Cycle one, right? Uh, the tentativeness cycle where we need to understand if it's gonna go higher or lower. So like I said, this is like close to the IPO price where we was trading at back in when 2015 I guess 2014 yeah 2014 uh and it's not telling us much information from the daily perspective and by the way trading on relatively low volume uh it's not showing any kind of strength it's not showing any kind of weakness either so it's just trying to grind to grind just trying to literally trying to live a little bit uh it's a no trade for me, with no clear parameters. All right, Michael AU, here's another Goldilocks, okay? Okay, another Goldilocks trade. It's very, they're all carbon copied. So whether you're doing gold futures, GLD, GDX, AU, or what have you, it's going to be the same thing. So on the monthly chart, you're seeing the same types of consolidation. You have the bottomy formation here. This is one thing that I like that uh, it finally broke up, uh, broke above the 200 SMA. So it's getting a little bit more institutional power. Uh, from the weekly perspective, it's trading into the top of the range. So it's trading into resistance. This $27 is resistance. Because this week is co uh, is closing so strong, there is an 85 to 90% chance that next week it will continue higher. Uh, any strong close into resistance suggests that the price action may continue higher with a very high, high probability. And then from the daily perspective, uh, you could see that we're having an inside day right now and uh, we're accumulating more bulls in, on this side and we're trying to push a little bit higher. So yes, it does have room for higher. Now you're going to ask, how high can it go? All right. So we do have some tails uh, into the $28. So it's going to move slowly into that direction. And the more it trades into the $28, the more and the more it will consolidate or close very strongly in that location, then it may do a further squeeze back into the 35 if it's going to do that, if it's going to have the same traction. All right. So I hope that was okay. All right, we have another set of three stocks, um, UPST. All right, here's another uh, bottoming. Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> All right, so UPST is another dead, uh, literally dead, dead, dead stock. It has been trading in a very sideways range for a really long time since... Uh, uh, it went uh, May 20, uh, 2022 back down into testing this 2025 20, box. Uh, so in here, you don't have any clues. It's just sideways. It's not getting picked up. It has zero interest at this point. Now, from the weekly perspective, you can see that still there's no interest. There's literally very little volume as well into it. Uh, and uh, I don't think that it's ready for anything just yet. From the daily perspective, well, the daily has put in a bottom. It's trying to catch the trend. It's caught in between moving averages, which I don't like. 
I would like to see a trade above 17 and 17 and change, 1720, 1730, 1750. I'll close and not only like a peak of high and then at the end of the by the end of the day it pulls back. No. And that will give it a little bit of a push probably towards the 19 to 20 area. But at this point, it's not really a great, uh, great stock. Um, DKNG. It's funny because I had DKNG on my list uh, to swing trade. Um, I believe it was this week and I pulled it off the list because it didn't meet my uh, my parameters, but uh, good catch there. Uh, you can see that it has a lot of support over here. I like the fact that the price caught the 50 SMA, the price pulled back. It's trying, today's going to be a decision day, okay? Today's going to be a decision day. You can see here that we have a doji. So going in, wherever that doji is going to close, this may be a try, like a, a bullish above type of trade over $18 or $18.40, okay? So this may be something that, um, you know, I'm, may even have on watch for next week of into the $18.40. And uh NIO Neo, here it is. All right, this is another dead one. Okay. I mean, wow. All right. So um basically this is trading into minor support, right? You can see these prior highs uh that we had in 2018. So these prior highs are setting right now the stage for support. It has not done anything since October of last year, and I don't think it's ready for anything. It's not that I don't think. The technicals are showing that it's not ready for anything. Um, it, it can potentially go lower under $7, but be very careful because uh, if it catches $5 or below, it's done. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look good. And uh, from the weekly perspective, you can see that there's a lot of pressure coming from the 20 SMA. So still the trend is down. Even if you're not watching the 20 SMA, you have high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high. So the price action is forcing uh, to go lower. This is actually a weekly sell that may trigger uh, below $8.50 that may push the price lower. So if you're seeing the price under $8.50, it will start pushing lower. Uh, so from the daily perspective, we have a low, we have a higher low, and we have a revisit of the prior low. Um, I don't like it. It's fairly sideways, and I would need to see it above $10 in order to start uh, moving in some kind of uh, direction. All right, the next one is uh, BBIO. Let's take a quick look, BBIO. All right. Uh, well, here's one that is a little bit more interesting. I'm going to keep it on the daily chart for now. It's uh, definitely trading. Oh, it's a pharma. Okay, pharma, low volume. Okay, I don't trade pharma stocks, just FYI. I don't swing trade. I don't invest in them because if there is any kind of chatter into it or an FDA approval or a miss or anything, this could be uh, a problem. Uh, but what I'm seeing here is that we have two candles that are uh, really into a consolidation mode. So this shows me that for two days in a row, we have been consolidating into the very close to the $16 area. So I would watch this for if you want to watch it, uh, watch it for next week over $15 and 90 cents or so, or even $16, because it has the potential to run to fill this a uh, tradable void all the way to about $18. So I hope that was uh, okay. Halo, H, here we go, H A L O. All right, here's a pattern that I like. <laughs> okay, here's a pattern that I like. All right, oh, okay, uh, not as dot that I like. Okay. But anyways, uh, the pattern, we're talking about patterns. We have a low, a confirmed low, which I like. Uh, and we have, we're, we're rotating right now. So today is the day when we can't go higher. So anything that trades over, um, $38 and 50 cents, 38.50, it's a little bit bullish. It still has a little bit of resistance into the 38.50. But uh, it could go to 39.80 and then 40 bucks, and then it could enter a short squeeze to about 41 dollars. That's that's going to be you know the biggest resistance, and then after that, it's going to try to go into the 43 dollars and 80 cents again. So not not a bad pick. Apple, <laughs> applesauce. 
<laughs> Loving the Apple. All right. So take a look at Apple here, guys. The Apple, very interesting. By the way, this was our entry. Um, so we have mega support into the $143. Look what just happened today, guys. So we just came in, tested, uh, tested the 10 EMA, trend setter, fanning out of the moving average. This is bullish for Monday. So if you're in, keep it. If you're not in, look for Monday for an entry opportunity. Don't get in now. But um, just uh, Monday, take it over uh, today's high, Thursday's high, okay? And it could shoot up higher. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, there is resistance. You can see here that I did a, not, a lot of analysis. This is the $170 is the target for it. $170 to $175 target for it. Apple is very good. Okay, DVN. All right, here's another energy that gapped up. I was telling you guys, they're all carbon copied. You're all, you're going to see like a little, you know, kind of gap up and everything, but it's a gap up into resistance, you know, so that's going to be a problem. Uh, it's not going to be a problem and it's going to be fairly easy. It's going to be bullish above $55 and it's going to be bearish below $50.50. All right, I covered NEO, LMT. All right, LMT super strong. You can see that it had a daily buy over here. It had a daily buy. This was the earlier entry. And now it's ready for a breakout, okay? $496.80 um, is going to be the breakout. And you can see that it's moving in stages. So it goes up. It's consolidating, even though it's pulling back here a little bit. And then it rallies. And then it forms the similar type, kind of like a pullback. Uh, this is a breakout over 296 and 80, uh, 290, 400, sorry, $496.84. It's very, very bullish. Uh, and you're probably asking, okay, so uh, where is it going to go? Okay, so let's uh, quickly determine which way it's going to go. So I'm going to take a look at this segment right here, and then I'm going to pull it on the weekly so we could see it much better. All right, so here is what we're seeing. Uh, the next target is going to be 516 to 517, 525 to 27. Next target into the 543. And if you're keeping it long term, it does have a lot of room for higher 550 and going into the very close to 600. So LMT looks very good. Uh, the other one is RTX. OK, this is more like it. So the, now we're getting somewhere because uh, uh, don't look for weakness. Always don't try to bottom pick every time uh, because that doesn't really work. Just focus on relative strength. Do you guys want to have like instant cash? Do you want to have like instant like uh, instant gratification or do you want to sit in Wayfair like forever? Uh, pick stocks that have relative strength in relationship to in relation to the market in relation to the queues the spies etc because they're going to run faster okay you guys saw the lmt rtx is pretty much kind of like the same thing so um i like the theme here um uh, let's go to the monthly chart just a little bit uh still into the grind you can see that the price action is still higher uh, it still needs, I mean, it's still going to be very wishy-washy back and forth, back and forth, but it's trying to digest, uh, digest the highs. Uh, as long as support is going to hold into the $93, uh, the price action is likely to hold. If not, it's likely going to pull back to the 200 SMA. But if it's holding the uh, 50 SMA and support, which is into the area, into the 93, let's call it, let's call it like that area, uh, you want to see it close above 100. So not you don't want to see topping tails. You want to see strong candle close into, into that area. And yes, it does have a lot of room uh, for higher uh, to run. Uh, and uh, you could do some, let's, uh, let's see here. Okay. So yeah, it does have room to the uh, just above the 110. Uh, it has 115, 120. So it has, you know, it has some room to the upside. Okay, Oxy. Okay, I like I, I like all your names. I like all your stocks. Everything that you posted is cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, you're in the right direction. You're really no. You, you know what you're doing. Okay, so um, Oxy. It has the lid here with the 200 SMA. That's why you're having the chop fest. 
All right, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is Christmas light effect. Uh, so when you're going to the weekly, you can see that you have a little bit of ascending support, just a little bit, it's still flat, but still very noisy. Look at this band over here. So still very noisy, just going in a little bit, uh, just barely in, but this is again, major support. You want to see the price tackle uh, and, uh, tackle this prior high, especially into the 67. You want to see a close above it, obviously. And that is when you're going to uh, pick up some, uh, some more. So it does have room for higher going back into the 90s. If things are going to go, if crude is just going to start exploding, uh, Oxy is just going to go higher with it. And basically all of these uh, stocks, uh, all of these energy stocks, they're going to go up with it. All right, GOLD. Okay, gold is just like GLD, just like AU, just like everything else. All right, so here we go. G uh, gold, GOLD. Uh, yesterday had this doji. Okay, so we had this doji in yesterday's training, which shows us that we have tested the prior resistance and that if we break above this high, uh, going today, I don't think we have time today because it's already 1230. The market closes at four. Um, but going into next week, we trade above this high. This is going to be like the most interesting part. We trade above the high. We're going to try to tackle the 200 SMA and we break the 200 SMA. Then we can enter a further squeeze into the 25s. All right. Uh, CL, is that Colgate or is that crude oil? Colgate, Colgate. Here's Colgate. Okay. CL. We'll do both. How's that? Because I have like I have like three 13 other messages to get into. So we'll just do both. Uh, if you're looking at Colgate consolidation into the highs, definitely, you know, um, holding on very strong. Uh, this is one that you need like a lot of patience in order to um, um, to see it develop for higher, but it does look higher. It's holding up the trend really good. I mean, take a look at it, okay? This is good long-term, long-term, long-term. Over 85 could snap up. I had some projections at one time, entered the $120. And uh, if you're wondering about crude, okay? All right, here it is. You can see highly, highly traded by moi. All right, so here's the monthly projection with the low, first higher low, second higher low, third higher low, and here we go into a trigger point. So it's still pointing higher. So it does still have room for the upside bunches, <laughs> bunches and bunches. It's again, you know, into a lot of resistance. And I'm in a swing in uh, in uh, crude. I'm going to tell you where, what my entry was in a second. Uh, I have not placed in a trail stop yet because I don't have uh, that area marked on my chart, but uh, it does look good into resistance. It looks like the more it stays into the resistance and the if it breaks next week or uh, if it breaks 82 next week, it's going to start engaging higher uh, back into the 85 and 88. I got in on a sandwich. Uh, I got in on a daily sandwich uh, into the $74 and I think it was 25 cents on my exact entry. And I had a really tight stop into the 72 bucks. So you can see that the risk to reward ratio is insane as the price went higher. But you can see that a price, uh, and by the way, this is an island so far. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see if it's going to be an island continuation or an island reversal. That will be determined because we could still have gap ups or gap downs uh, going into, I don't know, let's see this weekend or next week. I mean, we're going to have to wait and see. But so far, it's trading into resistance. And as long as the gap up support is going to hold into the $78, the $79 to $78, the price action is still going to consolidate for higher. So next week, if we tackle these highs over 82, up we go, 84, 85. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Uh, let's see. I'm looking for stocks and then I'm going to answer some questions in here. IOT. All right. Um, all right. Never, I, I don't think I've ever traded this. 
<laughs> stock ever. I've been trading for over 20 years, 25 years. Um, so anyways, uh, uptrend, definitely daily uptrend. Uh, it just needs to get over $19.60 per higher. Uh, the weekly chart also suggests breakout over $20, $20 and change, and you should be good to go. It should start moving a little bit higher. Um, I don't know how this trades, though. I, like I said, I've never traded this before, but it looks higher from the technical stamp standpoint. Uh, it looks like 20, 25, 27, 50 or so. All right. Hey, Ashik. Of course, HKD. All right. Wow. What the heck is this? <laughs> like there's a whole lot of nothing on the weekly, just a flat, boring range. There's a whole lot of nothing on the monthly. And the daily suggests that, oh, my gosh, just please stay away from this. <laughs> um, seriously. So from the volume, let me just check out something. Oh, don't even bother. Don't even bother. When you're seeing gaps in between prices and this is at 11 o'clock, this is garbage. Garbage. Just toss, stay away. There's nothing to see here. All right. Um, any concerns about Apple moving up right into a gap? Let's put Apple back up here. All right. So... So I don't know what kind of gap you're talking about, but Apple is very robust and it does look like it wants to really move up higher. Uh, let's put it on the daily here. Okay, so let's squish it a little bit. So I was saying that if it trades, on, so on, for example, if you're in a trade, just stay in, no reason to do anything. And then at the end of the day, move your stop trail into trail it into 160. But if you're not in, you want to have a setup, right? Because when you have... You, you need to know how many shares you're going to buy, right? Because other than that, if you don't have an entry, you don't have the stop, you have no idea how many shares you're going to get. Like you're going to wing it. And then you're going to be all over the place. And then you're going to go like, oh my God, why am I losing money? Why am I blowing up my account? Uh, but we're definitely into resistance and we're tackling this resistance. You can see that we have a prior pivot high from September 2022. Uh, and we're digesting just that. The fact that the price action went back up, super robust, strong. So it's ready to continue higher, at least into the, these prior highs. You guys see this prior high right here. OK, so I have no concerns in Apple. Zero, zero concerns in Apple. All right. And that's a good stock. OK, I typically trade stocks that are priced uh, between uh, th that are uh, th th that have volume uh, that have a volume of one point five million shares. That's right. One point five million shares. So I need very liquid stocks. I need very liquid stocks. I need stocks where institutions uh, buy buy huge amount of shares. OK, I'm not fully around with 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 or even 500,000 on a daily volume. I need to see a constant of 1.5 million. Then you're going to be super selective when you do that. All right. Another stock, NOC. All right. Ugh, this is another one that is kind of like boring. OK, uh, no, it's not boring. Oh, I haven't looked at this stock in a long time. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, I, I don't see your name in here, but 260511 that posted this stock guide. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Uh, even though it's really crappy on the daily, <laughs> uh, has a very interesting setup right here. So guys, uh, let's see what this high is here. For... 476, 476. So I'm going to put this a little bit here, 476. All right. If the price action is going to get above 476, anytime this month, anytime this month, it's going to start taking off. It's going to be a big squeeze all the way into this high. Okay. So this is what the technicals are pointing and the stop. I love it. I love it. It's going to be like a 1R. You know, I would say one and a half hour if it goes that way. And you have to have time because it's going to it's going to take 
a couple of months. It's going to take more than a couple of months, maybe. Uh, or maybe it could do like a swish higher. I don't know. But any in any case, we have a beautiful double bottom support with the test and retest 10 EMA, 20 SMA into the trend. It is above what I absolutely love and adore, above minor, uh, ab uh, it's in minor support is well underneath. So we have these highs that are projecting strength a little bit higher. So this is really good. But by the way, the daily, and I haven't looked at this stock in a really long time. The daily is really crappy because the daily shows that even if it triggers this 176.50-ish, it will have some uh, trouble into the 487. So the only time frame that I see trading, the only time frame that you can trade this for better accuracy would be the monthly chart. Take the noise out from all the other time frames and just trade this one. Okay. Uh, UNG. Hey, Dan, I was hoping that somebody would bring a UNG. Remember, I remember the day when it was, uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me just go to the daily. I remember the day here. Let me just take these out because we, oops, we talked about them. Um, okay, here we go. All right. So here it is. I remember when, uh, you know, the price action started to go a little bit higher here and I actually traded it a little bit higher over here. Uh, and I was stocking for it and I was stocking it since February. And then I traded it at the end of February. It was a mega trade for us. You could look at our performance. It was a super profitable trade. It was the trade for February. And then in March, we had gold swing long, which is literally, my goodness, you know, it pays off your mortgage, mortgage. It, it, it pays off your entire mortgage uh, type of trade. So um, basically here, uh, the price action is very heavy. Um, I have received a question from one of my traders saying that, hey, it's natural gas. Uh, like I want to take it long term. And I said, OK, you can take it long term. But here are my thoughts. Are you ready to place? Are you ready to position size? Because it doesn't have any kind of parameter at this point. So are you ready to position position size for zero, zero? I mean, 0.00. .00. Uh, because that is what you're looking at, okay? Because you don't know which way it's going to dip, okay? Uh, you don't know how far it's going to dip. So my thought right now, I'm staying out of UNG as much as I love, you know, to trade commodities because they're so profitable. I'm just staying away. It has no rotational sign. If you want to be an investor into UNG, you could go right ahead, but make sure you position size and you're ready for a dip for another dollar or three or four or six because you don't know which way natural gas is going to go. So that's my thought on UNG. You know, it's trying to catch a knife, but if you're on the investor side and if you position, make sure you position size for zero, I think that's going to give you an advantage. Uh, okay, uh, UNH, because UNH popped big time. And then I'm going to answer some questions. Okay, let's see if we have some stocks. And then we're going to answer some questions. Okay, UNG, huge pop, huge pop into the 200 SMA. I actually tweeted today the area of resistance because you can't make this up, right? So you can see here that we had, <coughs> excuse me, massive support into the 460s. Uh, we lifted the price and we got it right where we wanted it. Uh, on uh, next week, it's going to be bullish above of 515 and it's going to be pulled back below bearish below 507 and uh weekly is still fairly strong so i would favor more and by the way the bearish below stands for a pullback because of the trend what is the trend here dominant the dominance is to the upside so i like the fact that it caught up a little bit this week uh, above just above the 20 sma and it just pushed a little bit OK, it just it just pushed a little bit. OK, higher. I like it. All right. Um, it does have room for higher. And by the way, if you're trading uh, futures, you know, you have noticed that Dow had relative strength, you know, this week. Um, let me show you the um, let's say why am if you're trading futures. Uh, OK, you saw that YM was definitely stronger this week, so it had a continuation. So this is just this is the weekly chart of the Dow futures. OK, weekly chart of Dow futures. And then if you're looking, for example, on the daily, you can see here the consolidation, 
right? You can see consolidation, consolidation, cons just like oil, right? Just like oil. Now, I want to show you something side by side, okay? So I'm going to put NASDAQ futures, right? Or NASDAQ, or, or you can do the analysis with the, uh, with the diamonds, and uh, we're going to do that next. Uh, but if you look, for example, here it is, on the weekly, right? It's still inside the prior week's high, right? Look at where the price is, 13,140. It's above pr uh, prior week's, uh, it's below prior week's high. So this is the Q, all right? So it's trading within within uh, high and low of last week, okay? So this is gonna be pretty cool because going into next week, we're gonna be bullish above this high. OK, we're going to be bullish above this high if we hold. And by the way, guys, very good news for next week. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, Ernie season starts on the 14th. I don't know. That's Thursday. I, I don't know. No, that's Friday, I believe. Friday on the 13th. Guys, I'll have jury duty. <sighs> OK, so anyways, I won't be trading, but um if it trades uh, 320, it's going to go higher. And now let me show you the diamonds, right? Because I showed you the uh, the Dow. Look at the difference, guys. See where the price is at in comparison to uh, last uh, week's high? Look at last week's high over here, this one. And look at where it's trading right now. It's so extended, right? It's so extended. All right. I'm going to answer some questions right now. How do you How do you follow me on Twitter? Let me just put it right here. All right, so it's twitter.com forward slash trade out loud. All right, so I do post ideas and such over there. Uh, another question is, what moving averages do I use? Okay, what moving averages do I use? Okay, so I use... As you guys can see here, four moving averages, right? I use the 200 simple moving average, which is red. I use the 20 simple moving average, which is blue. I use the green one right here, which is the 50 simple moving average. And I use the 10 exponential moving average. I use these moving averages on all my time frames, And I love trading with them. They're algorithmic rich zones. I keep on telling you guys all the time, all the time. All right. Uh, I, I know I have another pop-up question here from Dennis. Hey, Dennis, you uh, wanted to know about managing these trades. Is your philosophy of managing these trades to let it hit your target or your stop? So that's a good question. I do have a very simple uh, management system in place. Number one, uh, once my trade hits target one, I collect partial profits and it's up to you how many profits you want to take. I usually take half off the table at target one. Uh, but there's the catch because if there is velocity in the move. So, for example, if let's say this is the trigger right here. And if let's say I have a first target at three, 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 zero, right? My entry is three, two, seven. And let's say I have a target at three, three, zero. If I see that the momentum is because I'm in front of the computers, even in my swing trades, most of the time, um, then what I'm doing is I'm not taking profits at three, three, zero, but rather I'm placing a trail stop for half of my position at 330. So therefore, I'm still with the whole entire position. It's basically price action trailing. Uh, and then once I hit target two, I do the same thing. If I'm seeing that it's having a little bit of intraday resistance and it becomes a little bit sloppier for intraday trading, then I do raise all of my trail stops, including the one that was below, uh, I'm raising them into the uh, into the area where I have my target two. But if I see that target two is developing, for example, a range, I tend I tend to put the stop below the range because I still have a potential for a breakout further higher. So that's you know, and it, it you know, trailing is uh, seeing how the price action is reacting into different areas. And of course, if it Let's say I have a stop at the bottom of the pivot here. And if it reverses, yeah, I take my stop. I take my stop 99% of the time. There are some cases where I don't take my stops. All 
Hey, Frank. Thank you. All right, I do have some other questions here. Um, thanks, Dennis. Uh, let's see, I know there were some questions in here. Oh, we still have a little bit of room. You should spend more time on one time frame rather than jump around. Hey, you have to do the multi time frame analysis. If you're, and that's one of the biggest problems why people blow up their accounts because they're focused on only one time frame. And people that do that blow up their accounts. You have to make sure that you do a comprehensive analysis top down and you could see, okay, the monthly is into the trigger. The weekly is doing what is into resistance, let's say from the 20 SMA, and then the daily is trading right into the prior day's high. So you have to do that, okay? You have to jump around from time to time. And by the way, you don't jump because on your trading computer, you should have all the time frames on one screen. All right, but this is just a presentation. We're just talking about charts. All right, Frank, do you scalp ES on two nine twenty four ticks? No, I I don't do ticks. I I do points and I do high velocity. And uh, I trade traded the same ways. For example, if I trade the mini S and P, okay, so I zoom it in. For example, on let's say a five minute, okay, this is how I would trade it, okay. So the five minute, it has a low, it has a higher low that has developed into 11 o'clock and the bigger breakout. This would have been, uh, this would have been the trade. The entry would have been sometime uh, into 11.35, okay? The stop would be here um, into just below this uh, 41.09. So the entry would be anywhere 41.15 or so. So that would be like, kind of like this, That that would be the entry. And the target would be the target would be into this area right here because it is deriving from a re prior resistance area. OK, so you could see it right here. So that would be like an hour and a half. And then this is exactly what you do when you trail a trade. So when you're still in, you have a target, you have to take the decision and say, hey, am I happy with one and a half R? And if you are, you just take your profits and run. Or if not, you say, hey, I'm going to just sell half or I'm going to sell three quarters and I'm still going to keep uh, my active position in and wait until you get a breakout or a breakdown. So at this point, you're going to pretty much evaluate the support, evaluate the resistance. Right. And if you break above the resistance, you keep your trade active. If it breaks below the uh, support, you're definitely going to be closing your trade. And uh, in all honesty, I would have been out of the trade here. OK, at the first sign of rotation back to the downside. So I hope this was useful. Have no interest in scalping. How many successful traders uh, that are scalpers do you guys know? Crickets, 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 crickets. All right, thanks so much, everybody. This is a wrap for me. I think I've covered all the questions. 